So recently I did a video on an A500 Plus that I took apart, the one that had actually been quite badly damaged in the post. And I wanted to do a bit of clean up work on it, and particularly on the chips, because I wanted to see if they were working or not. And they've got quite a bit of battery corrosion on them and just the general nastiness that uh, comes out of the batteries. And I've had the idea for a while to use uh, an ultrasonic toothbrush and just combine it with your sort of anti-static brushes as a, a method for cleaning. And I thought maybe it'd be a bit more gentler on, say, chip legs if you're trying to clean the chips when they're loose and they're separate. And you can get between the pins on the chip with this quite easily. And the the motion of a, a sonic toothbrush is it just vibrates the bristles with a very small pattern of movement. So you're just really running the the brush around and it the toothbrush itself from the ultrasonic sort of shaking or vibration does the cleaning action so you're not going to scrub which you normally have to do. I kind of threw this together because I've, I've had this say I've had this idea a long time ago just kept putting it off but I also um, have done this for cleaning PCBs I mean obviously this particular board doesn't need cleaning but I just thought it might make sure to work if if the cleaning of boards where there's, there's damage you, it's, so the problem is when you're using these you've got to really move it around quite a bit to get any sort of cleaning action and you're only getting that each swipe of the brush whereas with this with it vibrating as it does you're really just guiding the brush around so you can pay a bit more attention to where you are and a bit more gentle around things and you should in theory get a much better clean so that that was kind of the part of the idea so I'll jump into the rest of that video now which I cut out of the A500 video and you'll be able to see this thing working. Now what I've actually done with this chip is I uh, had a go at cleaning it up. I don't know if this will show very well. Um, I think it's this side here, these contacts that I've, I've had a bit of a go at. Uh, they should look a little cleaner. It's not too bad, but you can clearly see there's a lot of corrosion on here from the battery and where it's been sat in the socket. And what I've actually done to do that is sort of come up with this half falling to, piece, to pieces gadget. It's just basically an ordinary uh, electric toothbrush. Now these are like the original sort of head that you would have for one of these. These <laughs> might sound a bit unpleasant but these are used where they've all been soaked in bleach for like days um, and I had the idea of instead of scrubbing away with these little brushes that you can buy is just attach one of these to here somehow originally I was going to try and attach the head part of this to to the head part of uh, the original one uh, it's a bit tricky I'm not quite really sure how to exactly the best way to go about that so what I've initially tried is just attaching this straight onto the metal shaft because uh, with these, if I can do it, they sort of crusted up um, lime scale in there I think. That comes off the metal shaft like that so it gives you something you can sort of drill, cut, cut one of these off and drill a hole in the end and then push that on. You might be able to see on here if, if the camera will focus. There's some uh, epoxy in there, so I've then sort of syringed some epoxy in the hole and it's actually come through where a couple of the bristles were down here. Pushed that in and left that to set so that that's firmly on there because this vibrates you need that to be a solid connection to the metal shaft. Uh, what I've also done is because the angle of the, the brush get another one. Normally the brush is angled this way so you can hold it and then that sort of gets into your mouth and you, you can get at your teeth easily. Now for doing say a flat surface that's not ideal because you can only get the point of the brush on so really it needs to be more that way. So what I've effectively done normally this would be like that is reverse it so that's you can see that's a much better angle then and, and the same could be done with these as I've, I've been thinking I didn't really want to use these on a PCB because I'm not sure you know is this going to create static whereas these are geared more to not creating static that's why I've 
I've used these instead of these these other heads and that gives you a much better angle to get the brush flatter to the surface and this could also be used for cleaning things up dry so uh, I, don't, I don't know not really got anything that I can test this on but you, you get something like this where you've got these grooves and gaps around here and it's not that easy to clean and obviously you can do it manually with a brush and scrub around but it's not always the best result uh, sometimes people will use a screwdriver and scrape along and again I don't think that gives the best result and it scratches things up but with something like this all you've got to do is just switch this on and run it around and it and it works I've tried it on um, some old laptops and it, it works for cleaning up any gaps even between the keys it, it works really well just to loosen any debris and you, you don't need to use any liquid on this you can you can do that dry so that's that's another possible use for this um, I just I've had this idea for a long time and never gotten around to it so I thought well let's at least just throw something together even though this isn't really I don't think this is the ideal setup I think it needs to some more length on it so that as the the uh, metal part moves the, obviously the further out this head is the more movement you'll get on the head which is what you want to get a better cleaner action but th there's still some on this uh, the button on this is broken so I have to use a pair of tweezers at the minute to switch that on you still get that sort of cleaning motion and that's pretty much all I've done with this chip I've let's, uh, get a focus on that so you see all this green on here and this I'm just doing this dry initially and this uh, this will go in all the gaps and you're not having to scrub hard and scrub around loads and loads to get in all the gaps because the the vibrations of the brush does the work for you that's at least my theory with this just like it would do if you were using it as a toothbrush and then also with these chips they have where the legs bend over they go into like little almost little holes and you don't obviously don't want to pull them out and you want to you want to try and scrub around here as much as possible but if you're scrubbing with this too much and you're moving it around really vigorously there's a risk of getting these bristles in here and snagging them and actually bending the pins so again you're not having to do that so much and put so much force on and this will go into those gaps and and clean the uh, clean around the pins and cleaning the holes a bit I'm not saying this is going to do a massive amount but and there we go I think that does look a little bit better I think that's a little bit better than it was and it certainly cleans out any debris in there but what I'm going to do is put this um, put put some vinegar in a, a tub some white vinegar and uh, do this with the liquid instead Just shut that off uh, hopefully that's not making too much of a racket on the microphone so I'm just gonna sit that in there to soak for a bit and now I'm going to uh, activate the the brush again and just try and get in here a bit with some of the liquid another reason I've used a tub like this with the wide sides is because this will kick up the liquid that's being used and it's really worth bearing that in mind because if you start to use isoprop, isoprop on this or other fluids that you wouldn't want in your eyes you, you really need to think about wearing goggles that's one of the downsides of, of this idea you can hopefully see I get this to perhaps focus a bit better hopefully see that that's really working in the gaps there and And this should give um, effectively an ultrasonic cleaning effect like you would get in a large ultrasonic cleaner that's how these work as a toothbrush it's ultrasonic very high frequency vibrations going through the uh, toothbrush So 
So I'm going to uh, carry on with this and give this a good clean up. Okay, so there's definitely an improvement to the look of that. It's not got everything that I can still see some green on some of the pins, might need a bit more work. And it does take quite a while. But obviously using something like this is a very gentle way of cleaning it. You're not scraping at the metal, you're not um, stripping away the metal. So this may be a, a potentially good way of doing it. It depends how bad the uh, corrosion is, I suppose. But I thought, well, it's got to be worth a try and experiment. I see that it's going quite dark now. But it's got any any corrosion from between the pins, any residue that's likely to cause any um, conductance between the pins, that will have obviously got washed away. And I'll, I'll give these a, also a clean with some isoprop as well. So I'm going to give all of these a quick clean up with the um, the vinegar and the whatever you want to call this monstrosity. And again, this works quite well. It works very well on these chips because you, I'm not having to put any pressure on. In some respects, the longer bristles might be better for certain um, certain purposes because they're not applying any real amount of pressure onto the chip itself. I'm able to get right in there um, and clean that. And just see if I can zoom that again. You might be able, you may or may not be able to see how this is creating quite a lot of bubbles and and that's actually what's doing the cleaning work here. I'm probably going to have to do this under a bit better lighting, a bit better conditions. As I say, this is just an experiment, uh, A to test these chips, and B to test this. Uh, this particular gadget that I've come up with. What I am finding, at least with the long bristles, there is a very small gap between the pin and the chip body and, and these bristles are very easily going down into that gap. And if, I think with a normal scrubbing you wouldn't get them to go down far enough but because these are vibrating they're, they're pushing down into that gap and just a gentle rocking motion is getting those bristles in there and cleaning any crap out that's in in between those pins and the, the chip without having to spay the legs out or anything. Uh, this is one that's clearly got some uh, corrosion on it and I can actually smell it as well. There's a, a very distinct smell. I guess it's in part the vinegar reacting with the uh, alkaline from the battery. And I'm not saying that the pins on the chip won't need rubbing with say a light wet and dry or a fiberglass brush or something just to remove a layer of oxidation or whatever to uh, get a decent contact. I'm not, not trying to sort of say this is a replacement but I think it's a good starting point uh, because it's a gentle starting point you know you've not got to scrub away at anything that much less risk of anything getting bent or damaged and you know, I'm not putting hardly any pressure on this to get a reasonable result. And the main thing here, as I've said, I'm trying to achieve is to just get rid of any potential uh, conductivity between the pins that shouldn't be there, that's, that's occurring because of any corrosion or build up between the pins. I'm also not going to say that this, this is actually uh, I'm also not going to say that this is actually going to take any less time than doing it without you know, the, the mechanical effect of, of the ultrasonic brush. Um, but what I will say is I'm hoping it does perhaps give a better clean. Uh, this actually shuts off after I think two and a half, three minutes. That's why I have to keep restarting it. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's certainly splashing the vinegar all over the place. So what I was saying about this, using certain other 
things like IPA, probably goggles is going to be a good idea. Certainly at least care to keep it that the brush that way rather than that way because it sort of flicks the liquid 90 degrees to which way the, um, the bristles are pointing. 90 degrees to the direction the bristles are pointing. Uh, finally I may as well also do the main CPU chip. It's not really been in harm's way but it's very surprising how how far the battery acid damage can travel. It's, it gets a very long way sometimes. Uh, some people have, have heard suggesting that it sort of turns into a vapour which does make a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense that it seems to settle uh, in the places that it does. Uh, yes, that's one problem. I've just knocked that with the actual toothbrush so there is always still a danger of bending pins. Another reason why actually I think um, a longer neck on the, the brush would be a help. So that's pretty much that. Nice mess made everywhere as you can probably see. Just try and uh, mop some of this up as best as I can. And what I'm going to do here is just use a fairly low power heat gun just to get some heat on here, drive things off a bit, uh, get rid of the excess uh, vinegar. Uh, this will be particularly useful on this chip because of these little holes where the pins sit in so the moisture is going to be quite a bit more difficult to get out of there. So that's them at least dry. Now obviously they're still likely to have contaminants on so the next issue here is to try and remove some of that contaminant. So I've got some IPA and I've got like a syringy thing and I'm just going to basically try and rinse these off a bit get a bit of IPA in here and just do a bit of a rinse down really where I can. So do the best I can really. I've also um, rinsed and dried this off a bit as well so this is obviously another option is I can now sort of brush these again a little bit, in particular this one to try and get any um, debris out of these holes in these pins as well. Again, with the IPA, just be mindful that this thing will splash it and if it gets in your eyes, it's not gonna be pleasant. Better set up with the in terms of a tub, probably a shallower tub is better because probably a shallower tub and a, a large tray to put everything in is going to be a better setup. Uh, sorry about the noise by the way in the background. I've got uh, an aircon unit on A because it's getting pretty hot in here, and B because that unit does also extract air out of the room, and obviously that helps all this IPA is uh, evaporating into the air so it's not the most pleasant thing to have around in the room. So I've just uh, got rid of all the IPA and all the vinegar out of the room just so there's no more evaporating. I'm just going to give these another bit of a dry just to make sure all the IPA is gone and everything. So I've had a good go with this. Uh, I think for a quick thrown together uh, idea, it's it's not worked out too badly really. It definitely uh, definitely works. It does require a bit of patience. It's it's not a very quick, vigorous clean. And as I've found out with uh, chip legs, 
it's not going to you know, sort of remove the oxidization but then that's not really what it's for it's the idea of this is it's a gentle clean so it'd be ideal for trying to clean PCB surfaces and just remove contaminant really and just get a bit more of a scrubbing away and because this tends to sort of generate bubbles and I suppose almost like miniature shock waves around the bristles is how it kind of works it it's going to be able to get underneath things so it'll get underneath the components and hopefully underneath some of the uh, chip sockets a bit uh, I've not tried it on a board yet that'll be one of the next things to have a go at I do think that having this extended like the the normal brushes are on a an extended um, sort of brush or shaft for the brush and that means that the motion is sort of amplified towards the end of the brush the shorter it is the less motion you're going to get although the further out that you go obviously the more um, strength you need to actually move the brush which is one of the reasons I didn't want to do that with these because these are quite thick and heavy in comparison to this sort of original brush and shaft there so I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to go about this but I would like to try this with a longer a longer neck on it and see what effect that has but I'd say even just getting a standard brush and pulling this off and reversing it and then using that as a, a sort of cleaning uh, mechanism for getting in the gaps of things just doing a dry clean like a, as I said a laptop keyboard or in gaps like this around equipment where it's hard to get at it works brilliantly for that I don't know if anyone else has already done this I've not seen anyone doing it but I wouldn't be surprised because it's a fairly obvious thing to do when you think about it uh, or maybe people have tried it and found that they they didn't find much of a benefit from it I don't know I have also seen um, somebody else did a video if I can remember who it was and I'll perhaps put a link in and it wasn't the sonic brushes it was the more mechanical ones and they have a round head and it sort of rotates left and right or counterclockwise and clockwise rapidly and they actually cut the bristles off of that and glued a little tiny sanding pad on it and just used it as a mini, miniature sort of shaper and sander which I thought was quite a novel idea so it might be something to to also have a go at but obviously that's not not going to be something you'd want to use on PCBs <laughs> so I just thought I'd share that idea to see if anyone else uh, wants to have a go at doing the same thing or develop the idea further I'd like to develop it further myself I've got a lot more thoughts on this and how it can be improved and and other things it could be used for and other ways this could be adapted uh, it's just the usual case of having the time to or putting the time aside to have a go at it I've got a few of these a couple of more handles one's actually a proper one for my toothbrush and it needs fixing these are battery changing and loads of spare heads and things so I've got plenty of these to sort of fiddle around with and have a go at so I hope, hopefully I'll do another video on it at some point but there's that many other things going on at the minute who knows but it'd be interesting to see if anyone else experiments with this if they want to drop a comment in and a link to perhaps some of their own videos if they have a go then that'd be that'd be great i'd love to see what other people could do with this idea